Hello and welcome to the latest instalment of Big Grooves and Music Talk. I am Chaz and this is Ben. And we are missing Liam Barnes today because he's doing something somewhere. No, we're not missing him. He's well, not here, but we're not <laughs> missing not him. Here, yeah. We're not really bothered, are we? No. No? No. Right, so news this week. We both went to gigs, didn't we? We went to some gigs. So I went to bring me the Horizon in Cardiff and Ben went to Fight Finger. No, they just go. I think the fans just go death punch, death punch. Really? When I saw yeah. them, they went, they went five finger. The fans went death punch. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't. I didn't. To tell you the truth, Chaz, I was absolutely battered. They may have done that, <laughs> and I don't know. Oh, by the way, we're on the gins in memory of Liam today. So, bring me the horizon in Cardiff. Bring me the horizon are obviously huge. They don't particularly need my press. Biggest but, metal band in Britain at the moment. Yeah, now, yeah. I think. Yeah, and uh, obviously, Sempaternal. Was really good. And before that, Sam Pitel. Sam Pitel. This is Sam Pitel! So it's the latest one, the follow up to Sam Pitel. Yes. Right. Yes. So they've gone for the same vibe. They've made it more commercial metal. But well, they managed to make it commercial, which I'm not anti at all. Like, there's a lot of metal bands that do commercial stuff, and even Sam Pitel was very commercial. He was quite good this time. We saw him earlier in the year at Reading, and it was like. Crikey, there's a lot on that back and track. Back and track then. As musicians, you're always a bit like, oh, oh. As a whole, Bring Me just have so many really, really good songs. Drown off the new album is probably, uh, yeah. for me, it's possibly probably the best, best song they've ever done, yeah. I think. Yeah. An enjoyable experience. I'd rate the evening at about a 7 out of 10, I'd say. So good. Ben, how were Five Finger Death Punch and the likes? I got him, for, I got him to Wembley for free. Four. My friend was interviewing Five Finger Death Punch. Arcane Roots got added to the lineup like a day before, and I was just like, "What?" Yeah. I think that must have been one of the biggest shows they've ever done. Which, yeah. and yeah, they were really well good. deserved. Well deserved. Yep, hundred percent. Yeah, and then obviously the best live band in metal were on second, Skindred. No, the per- best live band in, in I metal. Personally, I think they're the best live band in metal. Oh. The way they work a crowd is unbelievable. They are skindred and they're that good live. And you yeah, know, you get, get a crowd them. going, don't they? They're awesome. Five Finger Death Punch was literally like watching WWE rest, uh, like in music. It was literally okay. like every w- Five Finger Death Punch song is like an intro for a wrestler. <laughs> and I saw them there, a couple of people, where they have like hockey shirts, like ice hockey shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the like basketball jerseys and then camo trousers. Look. <laughs> yeah. All their fans dress like that as well. It's fantastic. <laughs> There's like English people coming in, but they're wearing a basketball top. I really hate <laughs> when English people wear American tops. All right, we'll move on to the main part of the show then, where we'll talk about bands. So Liam has sent us a band to listen to. Oh, yeah. He said, you can talk about Buck Cherry's newest album and whether there is space in the music nowadays for their brand of swagger rock and roll or if it's a fossil of the 80s that needs to die. As the album has been pretty badly reviewed by critics, but fans love it. Now I love how okay, all he brings to the show normally is they're just so blah. That's the most and intelligent he's thing he's ever yeah. yeah. What's Why is he bringing up a debate point? Well, I'm going to throw this out here. As a person who's a member of a rock band and a big rock, dirty, bluesy rock yeah. band, I don't like Buck Cherry. Yeah, They've it's always funny. got on my tits. You know, they're really big one. You know, it's like, you're crazy, bitch, but your fuck's all good. <laughs> that one. I hate that song. It does my head in. It's Even for rock, yeah. it's over the top, you know? Here we go, then. No. I kind of half like it. It's not something that I particularly get into and listen to a lot, but I can see why people like it. It's fun, it's, you know, it's I mean, gritty. It's, it's, I think there is space for this to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I think there is. Why would people... I don't listen to this and think like, oh yeah, like no one's going to listen to that. Of course some people will. I just can't yeah. stand the thing's voice. And most critics are morons anyway. 
Including us. I think what they do is pretty harmless, uh, you know. It sounds just like a run of the rock, mill Black it? Cherry album. Yeah. That's but he likes is. that, Liam. He loves, like, run of the mill albums well, that's why from the bands fans... that have been out, out, like, who had their heyday years ago. The reason the fans love it is because it's just Black Cherry. Yeah. The reason critics don't it's like a it is because album. it's still Black Cherry. Yeah, yeah. It's like, the only people that are really li- realistically going to buy your record are the fans that you already have. Then you yeah. give them what, give them yeah. what they want. Yeah. Best of luck to you, Buck Cherry. Not that you need it, you're pretty big. Good talking point. Mm. Maybe bring more than Blair's to uh, the next show. This is not Blair. It's not I reckon Blair. it's kind of like. <laughs> got like a. <laughs> ben, what have you bought for us today? Uh, well, Charles. Charles. Charlie Charles. I really enjoy, I've decided, on Music Talk talking about bands that are fucking metal. Continuing with that theme, I'm going to talk about Vale of Meyer's latest album, Matriarch. Woo! Put it on. Yeah, I haven't heard this yet, so let's do it. You're gonna hate this. Wait for the singer's voice, of course. You're gonna love it. Oh my Dude, god. Like, anyway, so why, hang on, no. Why is this a thing in metal, though? Like, dirty blur. Oh, ah, yeah. It's called contrast, you Neanderthal. No, but you can have <laughs> nice vocals. I mean, we, we did Heart of a Coward last week. That's a really good vocal. Oh, you can. That's just unfair comparing St. Perlman to Jamie. He's godlike. Like, they, I mean, you look at other bands in metal at the moment, and it's always when they get to the chorus, the, the singing is. It's, it's wimpy. It's wussy. It's, it, this is just, it's power, you know what I mean? It's like power metal inspired. You could sing on a, like a pop punk record and you'd be like, oh, don't Yeah, like I normally, like, I'm not normally keen, but I love this, it's great. It's not my favourite of Mayla Mara album, though, I've got to say. Is this but a new they, singer or? Yeah, their singer left. The new singer's got obviously a much, he's got a much wider range of skills. Yeah, I've got skills. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> To be fair though, they are, for me, they are very much a sort of a record band, a studio band. I've seen them live a couple of times now and their their tracks are so layered up with guitars. They do like really complex and awesome dual guitar like harmonies and stuff. And then when they play live, they've got one guitar player. Oh right, So it okay. just doesn't sound yeah. full enough and... I remember them. I just don't know why they haven't. Yeah. They wrote their first album with two guitars, basically with the idea of getting another guitar player. Then they never did. Their second album, right, we only have one guitar player now, so the guitar parts were done. Like, they had one guitar player, and I was like, brilliant. That is their best album, definitely. Okay. But since then, this album and the one before, they've gone back gone to, back, like, right. writing that like, they have two guitar players, and they just, and I just, how could you, like, so cleverly not make that mistake and then make it? To be honest, I don't, I don't hate this, you know, it's fine. It's, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. So this is this, this album is well good. Again, if you love metal and everything awesome about it, go and check Van Meyer out. Don't just listen to this album. Listen to all of them because they've never done a bad record. They've definitely gone a lot more mainstream on this compared with where they've been. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be heavier. This, to be honest, it's it's not that bad. Uh, I say not that bad, not that heavy. All right, there you go. Check them out. My pick of this week. Is. It was a very late pick. My pick for this week is AWOL Nation with their album, Run. They've been around for a few years. <laughs> Apologies, viewers. This album, I actually haven't heard all of it. I pulled a Liam and a Ben on it. It's very, very random. There's a lot of very different things in it which you can't quite place. I, yeah, I still don't know what to think of it. 
if I'm honest. It's all over the place, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I've listened to them quite a bit for a while, mostly because Sale is just a phenomenal that song. That is a belter. Yeah, yeah. it's... <sighs> I can't... I mean, we're looking early. What a two, song! 200 million plays. 232 yeah. million plays yeah, on Spotify. Spotify. I was not expecting that. Fair play, lads. Yeah. Fair play. They're just a really hard band to like pick, because everything I've ever heard from them has been so different, and this album just falls into that. Yeah. It does kind of just about merge into it, and I see I what they I admire the sort of creativity behind it. Yeah. It's very bold. Yeah. Like what they do in terms yeah. of like artistic decisions. You need to listen to like them for quite a long time to really understand it. I think. Well, that's the thing. I, I still don't understand it entirely. Yeah. I guess from pulling like lots of bits from lots of different genres, it does open them up to like a larger crowd altogether. Get yeah, more people be like, oh, yeah, I like that bit of that song. Mm. That works with my genres. The opening song to this, Run, uh, I played to them just before we started shooting this. It's also the name of the album. I don't know what happened when that was on. I was just it's... like, how can I understand you? <laughs> and I was really weirded out that you picked this. It's so dirty and like the yeah. drums are simplistic on it and obviously they're electric, but and I would prefer a full drum kit, I'll just throw that Oh out. yeah, I'm not saying but, that um... this should have a full drum like real drum kit on it. It does suit. But No, but I would prefer a full drum kit yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. Let's be honest. Check it out, people. Check mm. it out, see what you think because I certainly don't know what I think. <laughs> That's a wild Asian. Everyone go check them out. Really good band. Really weird band, but really good. You know what time it is. It is time for Naughty Little Tune. Oh, now that, my friend, is a naughty little tune. And this week's Naughty Little Tune was suggested by our man, the big dog, Andrew Dutton. Andrew Dutton uh, put us on last week in the lovely town of Hartford. It was a jolly good night mm -hmm. and we have huge respect for what he does. He's a good promoter yeah. for and any AR. local scene. Yeah, uh, AR, AR. It's a really good guy and he suggested that we go and check out a band called The Hunter and North of the tune this week is The Hunter with their song Bonfire. No, we don't know which way he's home. So the Hunter are a band from London. The Hunter have recently released two songs and they've been flying off the chain on the internet. Loads of yeah. views on their music videos. They've got two music videos for both of them. They're both on Spotify. In terms of sounds like, what do you reckon? There was one song that I heard of theirs that had a sort of Jake Buggy sort of vibe, to be honest. I really? thought. A bit rocky, Definitely huh? for fans of Catfish and the Bottle Men. There's a tiny bit of someone like the Coots in there for me. They're kind of like, they're very pop rocky, aren't they? Like British pop rock sort yeah. of thing. It's quite up upbeat in a way. Um, and it's also quite, it's obviously relationship influenced. And yeah, they're just really, I think they're a really good band. I think Andrew's pointing us in the right direction with telling us. See why they're out. doing, I can hear why they're going in the right direction. Like, this is definitely the sort of song that if it got the right exposure, a lot of people would really like it. Yeah, they, I'm looking on. Extremely hooky. Looking on Spotify, they're, they're two songs on Spotify of 265,000 and 121,000 plays. And it hasn't been out that long, they've got no other material, so it's quite. It's a good start. Yeah, it's that's impressive. Really good start. Yeah, well played, well played. Um, so that's the Hunter, so you should definitely go and check out the Hunter. Yeah. Uh, I think they're doing a load of shows everywhere at the moment, particularly the London weather. Well, I can. Uh, they've only got one show listed yeah. listed so it'll be up that's not too much either is it i imagine it'll be busy though rammed yeah i mean this is the sort of rock music that will always be popular in this country i think you know what i mean i just got a glimpse of myself on the screen and this orange and blue isn't isn't really working at all is it so that's the show for this week um we've had fun more fun than normal I'd, I'd say oh absolutely thank you very much for watching and uh i hope you enjoyed the show in its better version uh the normal if you would like to subscribe this week's subscribe button is this week's subscribe button is the flyer for our next gig at rind in reading and you better be there because it's going to be off 
the chain. To, uh, the next two shoot shows coming up, we're going to do, just before Christmas, we're going to do a Christmas special. We'll probably talk about Christmas songs and some other fun stuff. Um, and then we've got a yearly review show that we're going to put together as well where we talk about everything. The Big Gruesome Awards. The Big Gruesome Awards, yeah. yeah. That's it. You get one for being the biggest knobhead. You get one for being the biggest ginger well, wearing that's American something I'm proud shirt. of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching and have a wonderful evening or day or afternoon.